Good morning. That's a uh, tough technical act to follow, so I won't even, I won't even try. Um, and you'll see by my first slide why that is. I love, this, uh, <laughs> I love this image from Tales magazine. And I know, like, you, like me, I'm sure you're an avid subscriber to this magazine. I mean, um, I, didn't, I, can't, I didn't even know magazines like this existed still. But I saw this a few months ago, and I really thought it provided an interesting uh, lesson on why context matters. So read the, the caption carefully there. Rachel Ray finds inspiration in cooking her family and her dogs. <laughs> and... When I first saw this, I was really surprised that there wasn't more media attention on, on this, right? Because, I mean, I don't know about you, I've always thought Rachel Ray is a little shady. Um, and she, she's effectively admitting that she's a cannibal, but not only a cannibal, but she enjoys cooking her own family. And then for that little umami flavor, throws in some bits of her dog, I guess, as well. And of course, we know that's, that's not right, right? I mean, I, we can't prove... Uh, Rachel Ray is a cannibal, and I, I certainly don't think she is. And a missing comma really changes everything in that sentence. Commas provide us context, right? And I think context is, is super important. And so today we're at a, a conference where we're all focused on performance. Most of our day jobs, we're obsessed with performance and performance optimization. Believe it or not, I have customers whose yearly bonuses are tied to how their sites perform. And over the next few days, you're going to hear from speakers like Jeff and others who are much smarter than I am about how to optimize you know, images, the latest CDN techniques, the, the latest back-end optimization techniques to shave milliseconds off of page load time or mobile app load time or, or mobile web load time. And you'll come to vendor booths like Keynote, and, and we'll tell you about if you just use our product, performance will really be improved. But I sometimes wonder if we've neglected to begin at the beginning, and we should ask maybe first, you know, what is, what is good performance? Um, so I've been around long enough, I've been at Keynote 14 years to remember the eight second rule, and that's sort of like admitting that I remember bulletin board systems or late nights where I made cool graphics with the ASCII characters, right? I mean, women, women love that, right? Um, I probably shared a little too much, maybe you can picture me in high school now. Uh, but, but, you know, of course, eight seconds isn't fast enough, clearly, right? I mean, and then, you know, for the last few years at Keynote, we've talked about two seconds. But the question is, two seconds to what? Two seconds to a, a page end-to-end -end load, above the fold, uh, render start, some button that you want to click on. And, and really, do those numbers even work in the new context of endless scrolling pages and mobile applications and single-page applications? And, and, and to take it even further, does performance mean the same thing to the same, to same people? If you go to talk to a, a database uh, person or, or a back-end engineer and you start talking about performance, what they probably are thinking about is query performance or function performance, right? They're thinking about milliseconds, not, not seconds. Or if you go and talk to a marketing manager or a business owner of a site, they'll be thinking probably about revenue impact, or a user engagement, and not speed at all. And I've been in meetings where that's happened, and it's been sort of like we're talking completely a different language. So back to the foundational question, you know, what is good performance? And really, I think it's about the customer, not, not about a number. Or said another way, I think good performance is about capturing that fleeting moment with the customer and optimizing that business outcome. And I know it's, it's, it's early and I hate to burst our bubble, but you know, most of the sites and platforms and applications that we work on are really not about changing the world. They're really about a business outcome. They're about conversion or brand or cost savings or product awareness or, or whatever. And at the end of the day, they exist for a business purpose and performance is good enough when we've optimized the business outcome. And I, and I hope delighted the customer in the process. But I think this is the first important piece of context for all of us at a performance conference is that we have to put performance in the context of the business outcome. But of course, we, we still need data, right? We can't just say, oh, well, leave it to the business. We still need data. We still need to measure our sites, our apps. And so how do we approach that in the right context? And I have to admit, as a tool vendor even, that there's current limitations in the way that we measure sites today. So synthetic, we'll start with that one. It's out of order. But you know, we're a synthetic vendor, uh, we have synthetic products, and you know, synthetic data allows you to measure page performance in a very detailed way. It's very diagnostic, it's very stable, it allows you to make really good surgical recommendations about how to improve the site, but it's limited. 
because you can't measure every browser, you can't measure every user, every device, every location. And it's also limited in, in some ways because there's only so many endpoints to measure. You can you know, measure to DOM ready, measure to interactive or onload, measure to you know, uh, render start, um, but it's, it's somewhat limited. And the, similarly with RUM, I mean, RUM is, is great, real user data, right? We've all heard about it, talked about it, probably using it, but it's, it has some limitations as well. So RUM's great for getting performance of all customers, all browsers, all locations, all environments, but it doesn't yet have enough diagnostic detail, and that's you know, changing pretty quickly. And also you have the same problem with endpoints. What do you measure to? Interactive, you know, onload, uh, DOM, you know, what, what, you know, what metric do you want to use? And then you know, we also have system and application data, log data from, from backend agents, from tag and trace, from, from logs. And those have limitations as well because they're sometimes disconnected from the customer experience. So I can get data about my backend system, but is that really tied to a user session or what they're experiencing on the front end? And so the question, I guess, then, is what is the future of performance management, and there's lots of things we could talk about, but I had three ideas that I wanted to share. I think the first is correlating user behavior and performance. And primarily, probably this will be done in RUM data, but, and Sosta's done a great job. I saw Cliff back in the speaker's uh, lounge, shout out to Cliff. But Sosta's done a great job of really pushing this into their RUM product, but others, including Keynote, are following quickly behind where you want to basically capture the user experience, what is the user doing on the site or the app or the, the mobile site, and what is their sort of performance experience. And you can cross-correlate to find the performance sweet spot, that, that place where performance is not detracting from the business outcome. And really, it helps us answer questions like, how fast is fast enough? I was out to dinner last night with a customer, and, and he manages performance in 20 global markets. And they're finding that in each market, performance is obviously... Uh, you know, performance tolerance is obviously different. So in India, they're used to poorer performance than in Germany, and so their performance sweet spot of where performance, you know, doesn't detract from the business outcome is different. And so this sort of data cross-correlation is, is very, very interesting. The other thing is this video capture. This is a web page test image, and web page test started this out with their single point in time testing tool, but we're leveraging it now in, in some of our so solutions, and really seeing how a uh, transaction or page renders is really important. In that context, performance optimization is not about optimizing to some event, like first paint, uh, you know, DOM ready, uh, interactive, or onload, but it's to a business event. So when I can look and see how does my page render, I can see am I getting my customer the information they need as quickly as possible. Or if I'm a media site, am I balancing sort of the requirement to serve content and also ads, because ads are, are generating my revenue. And so we looked at a large site recently for a retail competitive study that we did. And what we found was we were looking at search results for, uh, for the retail site. And what we found was that if you checked all the boxes, you would say, yeah, the site you know, begins to render quickly, it, end to end it renders quickly. But at the end of the day, we found that the product images weren't loading at all until like four seconds later. So the video capture technology allowed us to actually see in context that what the business cared about, which was product images that you could click on and then buy, weren't actually rendering in the way that they thought they were, and that sort of changed the entire discussion. And then the last thing I think is data mashups, and I sort of changed this in my slide, but the fact that you know, we are thinking as a company, and I think other vendors are as well, about collecting not only system data, not only you know, synthetic and RUM data, but why not throw Twitter data in there, or app store reviews, or other sorts of revenue data, conversion data, and mash those up in a platform where we can actually draw correlations and help you know, sort of drive the business technology conversation. But you know, people ask me all the time, what, what is the one thing that will really help me improve my site? We work with hundreds of customers, thousands of sites in our practice every year. And what I find, I think, consistently is it really has nothing to do with technology choices. It's not about do I have this CDN or that CDN or do I have this you know, sort of agile, or agile flow versus waterfall or do I have in-source or outsource technology. It's really, to me, about do the business owners believe that performance is a key business metric, and can, and can the technology leadership put that performance in context? That's, to me, what the strongest predictor of site quality or, you know, really is, is, is the business engaged in performance. And so I think our challenge at a conference like this is we have to push, the, as performance people, the language of performance into a business context. We have to visualize our data, present our findings, make our case in that business language if we hope to build faster sites and apps.
And, you know, I think there's some ways to do that. The business cares about context, and there's a few ways to do that. One is look at your competitors. So we do lots of studies all the time where we're comparing, you know, our customer sites to their top ten competitors in their vertical, outside of their vertical, and it becomes super, super interesting when you start to show them how they stack up. And this data becomes something that drives then the business discussion about where do I invest my limited time and my limited resources. Best practices can do the same thing. So Keynote's done a... a, a for a long time, we haven't done the greatest job about pr providing context to our data. And so we're doing things like this health score now, where for every data point we capture, we're actually giving uh, business owners, technology owners as well, you know, information about how they stack up. You know, where, where are they sort of scoring poorly, and how can they, Im how can they improve? And so you know, this, these are sort of examples of taking and putting the data in context. And I think that is what drives you know, what, what will drive sort of the performance optimization next steps. And so some parting thoughts. <laughs> I like that image. It's cool. Um, I think number one is as performance people, we need to come out of the, you know, IT technology bat cave. I mean, the bat cave is cool. I love the bat cave, right, unless uh, it's the George Clooney Batman bat cave. But, um, but, you know, we have to come out of the bat cave and start talking, walking around talking to our product owners, to the business owner, to the marketing partner, right? We have to put our performance projects in the context of the business outcome. So, you know, find and, 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 and partner up with a business person and, and educate each other, right? Help them get performance and they'll help you get business and work together, I think, to create a culture that cares about performance. Not just for the sake of performance, right, but for the sake of the business uh, outcome. So, I mean, we have imperfect tools, and as a tool vendor, that's hard to admit, but we do. But we're working in, in, you know, on these evolving approaches, not just us, but a lot of other players as well. But I think the, the most important thing is, in the right context, we can really make uh, the Internet a lot better. Thanks for your time today. <laughs>